Hi, it's Karen here back from Karen Coats, and I'm on part, uh, excuse me, part seven of the memory game video series. And so far we just went over within our grid panel what we have to be able to make our memory game card grid. Okay, and so basically we have the static string of, of pictures and they're stored in an array. And then we have a static J button, array of buttons. And then we have the image icon. And in order to put a picture on a swing J button, you have to have an image icon. And in this case, for the backs of the cards, there's just the single image that we want on all the backs. And so we just have a single one here, single variable. And in order for that to work, you have to say new image icon and then this dot get class. And when it says this, it's referring to the grid panel component. And the class is going to be here. Let me show you what that means. Get class, get resource. And how I can show you is by saying copy qualified name. Okay. And when I, I'm just going to comment that out and paste it up here so I can show you. So control V to paste and it has memory game dot grid panel. So this is the class or package memory game and then dot grid panel and get resource. And the resource is images slash new star dot JPEG. That's just what I chose. And you can, um, you can change that path name to whatever yours happens to be for your card backs. Just make sure that it matches. And in over here, there's instead of a slash, you'll see a, a dot. And over here, for the actual file name, you see a slash. So that's just the only difference I want to point out. And then right here, we have the image icon, and it's an array of icons. And all we do here is declare it. We don't actually initialize it or assign values to it until we're inside the constructor for the grid panel class. Okay. And so that's going to be lowered down. And then we also have a variable that's private for this class only and is the image icon temp. Okay. And again, we do not assign the, the value to that until we're within the grid panel game itself or not game constructor. Then we have a static int for the score. And we started out with a value of zero. That's actually the default value for all integers or ints, but I'm, I'm specifying it and I'll show you why later. And then right here we have the private Boolean and it's for game over. And I was just checking to see, okay, is the game over or not true or false? And it defaults to false if you do not declare and initialize it here because all I'm doing is declaring it. Um, and then right here I commented out private jlabel winner and then I put new jlabel card back. Okay, we don't need this anymore so I'm just getting rid of it. Don't worry about it. And then there's some more things to actually get the gameplay to happen. That's what lines 33 to 37 represent. And so we're going to add a timer class and we're going to call it my timer. And then we have an integer that keeps track of how many images are open. And within the logic of the program, we only want to have two open images at a time. And then we want them to flip back to the card backs again. And so in order to figure that out and keep track of it, we have an integer or an int called current index. And that, that refers to the array. Within the array, every file name or item above has an index. And it starts with zero. So Nutcracker would be zero. Rudolph would be one. Santa would be two and it goes up to seven because we have a total of eight because zero counts with arrays. Okay. And then we have an odd click index and this integer is going to keep track of the first click that we make, the third, the fifth, and so on. 
and then the integer number of clicks, that keeps track of the total times we've clicked in the whole game. So when you're playing memory, you're going to want two clicks for every, you know, turn that you take. Okay, so here we have a public constructor for grid panel. And we're in the grid panel class, so that makes sense. And what we need to do to make a grid panel appear on our game panel, which was our class we looked at earlier. Um, and so remember, we're kind of stacking the layers here. We need to set the border, and it's going to be an empty border. And right now, I just set the values to 0, 0, 0, 0. And the reason I did that is because I don't want to have any gap between the edge of the window and the actual grid. I just want it to be kind of seamless and go right up to the edge. Like if you're thinking about it and you're doing like a Word document or something, your margins are going to be kind of like your borders. And if it's empty, then you're going straight to the edges. Kind of like you would if you're printing a photograph. But if you're doing a Word document or something, you'd want some space between the edge. Okay, so then you'd have numbers here. And for empty border, it the numbers go top, left, bottom, right. So it goes counterclockwise, essentially, the each number. Okay, and then set layout. I went ahead and, and made a new grid layout. And when you first type this out, you're going to get a red squiggly line. And as you hover over it, it'll ask you if you want to import it. And you do. And the import that you want is going, let me show you what the import list looks like. You're going to need color. You're going to need grid layout. And it's the Java AWT version, the util for random, and it's also going to be swing. So when you get a choice, a multiple choice comes up, you're going to choose AWT or Swing in general. Okay, and let's jump back down here. And then right here you have set background. You don't have to set a background color, but if you don't, it defaults to just like the gray or silver, which is kind of plain. So I just set it to white. You can do whatever color you want, though. You can green, purple, and as I showed you in that window builder, there's hundreds of options for colors. So set visible, I have it as, as true because I do want the grid to show when it constructs the grid or the, starts the game. And then I have add buttons. Now this is actually a method that I created because I didn't want the buttons to be inside excuse me, inside the grid panel. I didn't want a big, huge constructor for grid panel. So I just made an add buttons method. And how I did it, this is very lengthy. And so we're going to explain this in the next video. But here's your sneak peek at, at what we did. Okay, and it breaks down into choosing to assign the value or initialize number buttons, the integer from above, and we initialized it with the pictures array length, and we times it by two, because we're going to have eight cards or however many cards you chose, and then we're going to times it by two so that you can match up two. And then for the buttons, we have an array of J buttons, and that's what you actually click on, and how many you have is determined by the number of buttons, which is pics.length times two. And then the icons is also going to be set to that value because in order to have an icon on a button, you need an image icon. And so that's why that is. And those arrays and values we set at the top of our program in our earlier lines. Um, and then right here, if I click on here, it kind of shows you everywhere that we reference it. And we're going to get into the for loop here and the logic behind it in the next video. So thanks for watching. This was video eight, and we will get right back into things in this ninth video with the logic in the add buttons category. Thanks for watching.